What's up guys, it's Carl and Adam from Thoughts in Motion here on the beautiful and sunny Quayside. And what we're going to be talking about today is how to build something to be proud of because a lot of people out there now are looking into entrepreneurship, they're leaving college, it's that time of year and they don't really know what to do with themselves. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into probably quite a long video actually, but stay tuned, there's going to be some very, very good points in this. We're going to jump into a video on the varying factors that you have to take into account when you're trying to build something that you want to be proud of and something that's going to, you know, hopefully end up in a career. So, Carl, let's do this. Let's do it. First one we're going to look at is how other people impact this decision when it comes to whatever it is that you're building. So I know when we, so with this video, I'm going to talk about my experience with thoughts in motion and running that. Okay. And Carl's going to talk about his experience with his, um, you know, his bands and his guitar tuition business. Yeah. So for me, with thoughts in motion, um, I was very, very scared when it came to starting this up. Um, I was excited. I remember, but I was very scared. Yeah, <laughs> he actually talked me into building this. So I was very scared because. I thought a lot of people would take the piss and that a lot of people would say, oh, what the hell are you doing? Why are you doing this? You look like an idiot. You're yeah. talking shit. You can't even get your words out, blah, blah, blah. All these thoughts go through your head when you're trying to do something you want to do. And it does, it hurts because, you know, you're excited about this project or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, other people. Other people, other people ex exist. Other people <laughs> exist. Like they have their own thoughts, opinions, and things like that. Yeah. And it's a case of do you let that control your decisions when it comes to building this, or do you let it fuel you into say I'm kind of going to prove them wrong. <coughs> mm -hmm. So that was my decision when I came to thoughts and motion. I was like, I'm going to prove these people wrong, and I'm going to show them that I know what the fuck I'm talking about, and I know exactly how I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. It might take a few weeks. It might take months, years to prove them wrong, but I will do it. Uh, for me, for me, I wasn't so much thinking about other people and their impact and things like that when building the tuition or the band, whatever it might be. Obviously, I, a lot of the a lot of the um, advertising and, and the videos and stuff that I put out, I was thinking like, oh, are people going to think this is good? Are people going to think this looks cool? Are people going to be interested in booking lessons with me? But for the most part, whether whatever someone said, especially if it was negative. For the most part, it was like, well, I'm, I, I knew I was going to take that step and I knew I was going to do that. Mm. So I just pushed all of that aside and went, I'm going to go do this. I'm confident enough to do this. I'm good enough to do this. Let's see what happens kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of a different different spin versus like how you felt and the impacts of people when you were building thoughts in motion with me. Um, for me, it was more so I was already at, at the point where... I was self-aware enough not to care about those things. Mm. That being said, obviously when performing live with the band or whatever it might be, you do have, you still have that element of uh, uh, what are people gonna think about this set list? What are people gonna think about these songs? Yeah. Maybe it's songs that you've wrote or so, just songs that you're performing in general. And that's, I would say that's probably more so uh, people's thoughts and opinions and impact, like that's what impacted me more so than the tuition, but just in a different way than it affected you. Yeah, so like going back to me again, it's like, do you let people's like criticism, things like that kind of ruin you or do you let it kind of like fuel you? So obviously mm. I like to prove people wrong. I'm quite a know-it-all <laughs> and whatnot. So I was like, fuck you, I'm gonna do this. Yeah. Um, but in terms of you, if you're trying to build this, just to bring this back to you again, if you're trying to build something, you can't let other people stop you from doing it because you know you might feel guilty that you know all your friends are not doing very well, and you found something that you're happy with. Uh, you might feel a little bit of guilt even um, that you're doing something and they're not, um, and they might go, "Ah, oh, don't worry about that. Just come out drinking or whatever." And you've got to <laughs> be aware of that that it's going to happen when you try to do something that you want to do or build something to be proud of. People are going to have their own opinions, and it's like juggling them almost. Yeah. It's like juggling your own. It's like what do I think of me versus what I think what other people think of me as well. Yeah. So um, juggle the, juggle their expectations, but don't let them take them on board because some people do have reasonable advice. Yeah. I like call was like don't try and get too big because I was very excited. I was like oh I'm gonna be on YouTube and be a star. <laughs> and he's like no 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 it's gonna take ages. So. Okay. So the next point we're gonna talk about is managing your own expectations when it comes to whatever it is you're building. So for me I had to manage you know. I was like, I want to be very big. I want to be a success overnight. Like I was quite young at the time. Mm -hmm. I was like, I want to be a big overnight. I want everyone to listen to me. Everyone's going to like rave about me. People are going to know about me in Newcastle. I'm going to walk down the street. People are going to go, oh my God, it's Adam from Thoughts and In the club Holy and everything. Shit. Yeah, I'm going to walk in the club, like swagger in my nice shirt or whatever. And everyone's going to be like, it's that guy. 
two years later, it doesn't no. happen. No, so no, you've no. got to be careful of your own expectations. I was expecting to make money from this long before now, but obviously that's not the case. So you've got to be prepared that any goals that you set are have to be realistic and almost dull it down so that you don't set too high expectations. Tame, tame yeah. things. Tame expectations. So it's like, say you start off with the YouTube channel or whatever, one video a week. That's your commitment, that's what your expectation is, one video per week. Then once you hit that consistently, then you can move up to two or three or four or yeah. one every day. Yeah. As long as you have the time for that, that's how you should manage your expectations. Don't go, I'm gonna start a YouTube channel, I'm gonna put a video every day, it's gonna be five a week, I'm gonna do podcasts, this, speeches, too much. it's, it's too, much. too much and uh, you will just A, burn yourself out and B, you'll just cripple whatever dreams that you have. That's, that's kind of how I feel about it. So I feel like um, for me personally, when I expect too much of myself, I feel a lot of pressure and anxiety yeah. about a lot of the things that I do. So a lot of the time, like, talking about taming, um, taming it down and things like that, that's almost what I had to do. So like, again, starting with, uh, starting with the tuition and the band and things like that, it was almost like, right, if I can, if I can teach five students a week, that's my first mark, that's my first expectation of yeah. me. That's manageable, that's a good starting point. Once I've hit that, maybe I can expect to hit 10 or 15, and so on and so forth, until you get to the point where you're physically, you are comfortable and you can't really do any more than that. Same with the band, it was like, okay, well, maybe I can manage one gig a week, maybe eventually two or three, whatever it might be. Yeah. But what I would say is always slowly build to that point. Build your expectations up slowly over time because if you expect too much of yourself all at once, you'll get burnt out, you'll have anxiety, stress, a lot of pressure. And in return, that'll almost like stop you from actually being productive and, and getting those things done because you'll be kind of like, crap, how, your mind will be like, I, I expect all of this to happen. How is this gonna happen? What am yeah. I gonna do? Yeah, you're like almost, you've got so much on that you just sit there and fry. Yeah. Like you have no idea what to do next because you're like, oh, I've got this to do, this to do, this to do. Oh, I promised I'd do this and this and this and this and this. Because also on top of all these expectations so from your business and the expect expectations you put on yourself, <laughs> You've also got the expectations from other people to still have a life. Yeah. So you still want to be able to go out and enjoy yourself, things like that, depending on where you are in your business stage or whatever. Yeah. So if you're putting all this stress, like, you know, I'm gonna teach five lessons a week, yeah. 12 gigs a week, 14 million, whatever, <laughs> followers on Facebook in, in a month, yeah. it puts too much pressure on yourself and you'll just end up like isolating people and it's not healthy I for you. I would say just, just you just got to take your time with it and expect more as you go along rather than all of it all at once. Yeah, so manage your expectations of you, uh, make all goals for your business realistic and make sure that you can actually hit them without burning yourself out. Okay, point number three. Everyone that gets into sort of entrepreneurship or building something else, they always have people in mind who they want to aspire to be like. And one of those people tends to be people like Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, Gary Vee, all these people that have mass followings and they're yeah. like, I want to be this guy, I'm going to copy this guy. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, they're making loads of money and they've got the, you know, like sneaker brands and whatever else they've got, but that shit takes time. You are not going to, you know, that's not the reality that you're going to live in as soon as you start building something. It's not like, oh, I'm going to have my own business and put CEO on my Facebook page, say I am CEO of Carl Stacey guitar tuition. It's, it's like, so you know, easy to do yeah, that. <laughs> it's so easy to get carried on like with ego and stuff like that, that you yeah. forget that, you know, you've actually got to work for it. So um, you've got to manage what the expectation is for, you know, what you imagine it to be like versus what it actually is. So to chime in on that, like obviously talking about like social media and that kind of thing and what yeah. people say and what people want and what people want to be. Is thinking about the reality of the situation as well. Obviously, anyone that's successful at anything in this world, that wasn't an instant thing ever. No. That wasn't the reality. The reality was that they probably didn't have a social life. They probably worked 90 million hours a week. They probably like lost, lost money, lost friends, family, whatever it might have been in order to be that successful or to have what they have. Especially, obviously, Gary Vee in particular because obviously we read and watch Gary yeah. Vee. And I know that He's very passionate on that topic of talking about just your life sucking for 10 years to then have the rest of your life be amazing and have yeah. that thing that you've built. Yeah, again, it's like, you're not gonna be Zuckerberg, you're not gonna be Gates, you're not gonna be V, you're not gonna be anyone. Like, you are gonna fucking struggle. That's the truth. You are gonna yeah. struggle through it. We struggle with this even to just get the videos done because we are busy doing other things. So. We imagined, I remember when I imagined, I imagined that in a few months after starting, I'd be in front of like audiences of like 25, 30, right. 50 people. And I imagined that, you know, I'd have like, you know, a thousand or 2000 subscribers or whatever at the time. It just doesn't happen that way. So it's like, when that happens, 
don't let it burn you out or like you know throw water on the fire yeah it's like keep going keep going it takes time like two years in this game is nothing two years to build something is nothing like it's just you think of you think of where companies like I don't know, you know like companies are just kind of spawned out of nowhere, like remember when CEX kind of popped up everywhere, uh, like these yeah, exchange yeah. things here in the UK? But people people just see, oh there's a new shop, but they don't see the reality of any of that situation. Yeah, like right? it, it's probably, it probably took five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years for the person who owns that shop or that product or that business to actually finally go, okay, here you go, here's my product. Yeah. I mean, you've seen that picture of um, the guy, I can't remember his name, who runs a who created Amazon, yeah. sitting in like an office and with one computer, and he's just got a sign on the wall that says Amazon. <laughs> right? And you think, we now we take Amazon for granted. And it's like, oh, let's go on Amazon and buy this. Like, everyone uses Amazon. Everyone uses <laughs> Amazon, yeah. So like that guy probably had no fucking clue what he was doing back yeah. then. And then now he's like, a ball in, like he's got girls, bitches, all this stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> so the next point is behind the scenes versus the highlight reel. And this is very important because obviously with the age of social media and especially Instagram, people are scrolling through these things and they see all these amazing things, like in relation to the last point that we talked about where all of these CEOs or managers or whatever it might be have all of these amazing cars, girls, houses, whatever it might be. That is the highlight reel. That is what they have because of how much they've worked and everything that they've done. Yeah. So when you look at all these people, you need to be aware of like, when you see them in business meetings and you see them, you know, putting out a new video, it's like, hey guys, like I do this a lot. I'm like, yeah. hey guys, new video up, go watch it now. Yeah. Uh, get your free ebook on www.thoughtsemotion.co.uk. Yeah. Okay. I do all that, but you don't see me writing that ebook. You don't no. see me going, oh for God, like what do I put in next? You yeah. don't see me going, oh my God, this editing thing has crashed on me twice. Like you don't see that bit. So Behind you gotta remember that every, for everything, every like public victory, there's like little private sort of fuck me moments. There's little moments it's so where true it's like, because oh. like, again, in relation to what I do, people see the fact that I teach guitar because obviously I post videos or photos or have the website and all that kind of thing. Yeah. But they didn't see the amount of time that I spent on the website to actually mm. create a good website, to have this, the, the CEO, SEO even, for, the, uh, for Google searches, that kind of thing, to build up the reviews that I have. Yeah. Um, to build up the Facebook page, the likes, the, the comments, the, the all of those kinds of things, that takes a hell of a lot of behind the scenes time. Like literally, like that's the stuff that I spend most of the time doing. I spend probably more time behind the scenes than I actually do performing or teaching, whatever it might be, realistically. Yeah. Most of my hours is dedicated to that side of things. Yeah, because people don't see you learning a song and going, ping, fuck, like I got the note wrong. And then like, go, and then, oh damn it, I messed it up again. Like, <laughs> and then three hours later, you might have the song if you're lucky. Yeah, you might have the song, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so like, obviously when you see people's highlight reel, it's easy to go, oh, well, I don't have that. Oh, they look like, they make it look so easy, but yeah. it's so hard for me because you're witnessing your behind the scenes. You're not witnessing your highlight reel yet. So what you need to be aware of is that when you're looking at these highlight reels, yes, it looks awesome, but it's not gonna look that awesome from your perspective for you. Because when you're posting all these things on social media, everyone else sees the highlight reel, yeah. but you have to deal with the behind the scenes. You have to take the slow and long process behind the scenes. So you, you understand, whatever, whatever it is you post, you understand what went into that. Yeah. Whereas everyone else just sees the surface level, just like with everything, like you might look at someone that you look up to and see the surface. It's the same thing if you post something and someone else looks at that, it's exactly the same situation. Exactly, so you have to be aware that Everything else is, you're going to see is a highlight reel, but you have to take the slow path. You have to make the behind the scenes to make that highlight reel. So the very last point we want to get to is the responsibility that you're going to have to take on when, you know, say you've just finished university or whatever and you want to start something up. The responsibility that you're going to have to take involves some very, very menial things. It involves being responsible for, you know, updating, say for us, updating a website, updating social media, updating, you know, the YouTube constantly, changing designs, coming up with the logo designs, all that sort of shit is your responsibility. Meetings, phone calls. Yeah, meetings, such. phone calls. Um, <laughs> Like for me, example, like I took on George to the channel as well and he's doing fantastic so far. It took me six months to decide, pretty much like six months something like that, yeah, to decide that he was gonna be coming on the videos because he just wrote, but I needed to screen the shit out of him. So another responsibility that I have is who am I gonna bring into this channel? I don't just want anyone in, I want people who are driven, passionate yeah. and know what the fuck they're and talking about. And it's the responsibility to make sure that they do everything correctly and well. Yeah. And because if I don't make sure that he continues to post, he continues to write, he continues to film, then I miss out on content and I miss out on viewers and everything like that. 
So that's my responsibility. I have to look after the staff. You have to look after, you know, things like money. He has to look after band you know, members. Yeah, <laughs> he's responsible for his band members. He's responsible for, you know, the kids that he teaches guitar to. You know, all these things that you don't really think about the first time. You just think of the glory when you yeah. start. I think the, the idea is you've got to be, you've got to accept the responsibility of all of these things and think, okay, this is the steps that I have to take and I have to stick at it every single day, every single week to get to, to build something, to get to that point that you want to be at. And if you don't accept that responsibility, it's pretty much probably never going to happen, essentially. Exactly. Realistically. Yeah, if you don't have the response, like everything when it comes to this or building something that is yours, is your responsibility. If something fucks up, it is your responsibility. If someone else fucks up, it is your responsibility to make sure they don't do that again. And it all falls onto you. So you can't just go like, you know when you're growing up and it's like, oh, such and such hit me and tell a teacher. Yeah, yeah. You can't do that here. If someone hits you, you have to either hit back or run the fuck it's, away. It is your responsibility to make that decision. Uh, imagine, because a lot, of, a lot of the world, I'm not going to generalize, but a lot of the world wo work what, what's referred to as a normal job, right? Mm -hmm. So most people have managers or people above them, whatever it might yep. be. And those managers have responsibilities to look after you and the rest of the staff. That's essentially what it is. But think about it more in the way that you are your own boss and you are your own respons responsibility. So if something goes well, congratulations. If something goes bad, fix it. No one else is gonna do it for you. Yeah, you don't have, when it, when it comes to something that you wanna build, it's your responsibility. No one's gonna do it for you. No one's gonna say, oh, I'm gonna pull you out of the shit, unless you're very extremely lucky. Yeah. But no one's gonna come up to us and says, oh, we'll buy you a camera, no problem. We <laughs> had a, we, when we started, we had this camera that still films us now, um, no microphones, and we had a broken tripod. You forget it. Actually, we we used to have a worse camera than this. Remember, did we flip one? I think we used oh that yeah, the, the handheld one. Yeah. Shit, we did. Yeah. So this was actually an upgrade. The camera that, was that you an see upgrade. right now. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> that actually died on me in Dubai. So that, that just goes to show, like, we started from this really crappy. I think it was like a hundred pound flip cam thing. Mm. Now it's like a pretty decently priced Canon. Although mm. there is better, but you know we've got many upgrades to go still. So yeah, exactly. It's also your responsibility to fund it as well. You can't look for money in other people. Like. We've got, you know, two MacBooks that work on this, like fully good working MacBooks. We've got two cameras, two tripods, two microphones, two GoPros, two GoPros. You've got loads of memory cards. You've got everything that kind of works. So it is your responsibility when it comes to, you know, funding the business or whatever it is. It is your responsibility. Okay, so that was Thoughts and Motions tips on building something to be proud of and creating your own sort of brand, business, whatever it is that you want. So. I hope that this worked for you. We aim this primarily at people at this time of year coming out of university or, you know, finishing college or whatever it is. So we want this advice to go to those people, but also wherever you're coming from in life, realize it's never too late to start this stuff and that it is possible for you in whatever circumstance to start something up. You just have to realize that you play in the long game and that it isn't gonna happen overnight and there is a lot to it. There's a lot of stressful moments, sleepless yeah. nights, but it is all worth it, especially since you know you'd probably regret not doing it if you know if you didn't do it. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell because YouTube's crap, and uh, and you don't get notifications unless you click the bell. All of our platforms, like the website, Facebook, Instagram, are in the description below. Check those out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.